All right, well, we'll get going here uh, for everybody's time. Greetings and thank you so much for joining us today. And, and WoonCon's been so wonderful so far. What a great, great uh, event that's been put on. Uh, congratulations to that team. Um, my name is Dr. Brandon Bosquet. Um, I represent Aroa Biosurgery as a medical science liaison in the medical affairs department. So welcome to our talk today, where we wanted to talk to you about a very special wound dressing known as Endoform that Aroa has. And it is a tool in the toolbox of virtually anyone, specifically our nurses, um, to be able to actually heal our patients. So uh, a great talk before, uh, earlier today on wound dressings by Kathy Milne, she said something very, very important. She said, if you have the access to an advanced wound dressing to heal and regenerate our patients, why not use that as early as possible? Do you need to be in an inpatient setting in the hospital? Do you need to be in an operating room? Do you have to have special credentials? And at least to us at Aroa, the answer is no. We wanna be able to unlock regenerative healing for everybody. So let's talk today about Endoform and your ability to not just tread water, not just prevent wounds from getting worse, but to actually heal and regenerate your patients. Let's dive right into a pretty tough and complex wound. For people that know pyoderma gangrenosum, um, you know that it's tough to heal, very, very painful for patients, um, and um, could also um, lead to other issues like infection. While this is not always an infection, it could lead to infection. So this is a patient here that's had this really tough to treat wound for over 18 months. You can see it's necrotic, it's inflamed. Uh, what's nice about this patient is that they have pretty good blood flow. Their ABIs and their arterial ultrasounds are good. So that's a great thing, but they have autoimmune conditions like ulcerative colitis, sometimes you'll see rheumatoid arthritis, or even Crohn's disease. And what's really interesting, if you do know pyoderma gangrenosum, and if you've seen it, we all know in good wound care, you want to debride, you want to be sharp, you want to be aggressive. But what's interesting about pyoderma, because it's inflammatory, by sharply debriding it, you can actually make the wound worse and stuck in that inflammatory phase. What we want to do is move it from inflammatory to proliferative. And that's exactly what endoform is able to do. So you can see here, after 18 months, rolled edges, super painful, nine out of 10 pain. After just two weeks, look at the difference. Just applying endoform and a great foam dressing like Hydrofera, the patient most importantly reported their pain reduced by more than half. And you're already seeing that beautiful granulation tissue, all those budding um, uh, tissues, and the edges are starting to flatten out a little bit, which is super important when you're trying to heal. So again, another two weeks later, you're seeing that beautiful granulation tissue. The wound is starting to contract and heal from the edges. That white arrow, I want you to pay attention to that because this is a question we get a lot about endoform for people that know it and use it. What is uh, residual endoform that's still working and what slough that needs to be removed? That white arrow is a good example of residual endoform that's still working, still incorporating, still modulating that inflammation to get that patient to heal. 10 weeks later, remember this patient had this wound for 18 months. And at 10 weeks, we're seeing it flatten out. You're seeing that epithelialization or neo-epithelialization, all that new tissue, new skin forming over top of that wound. Also pay attention to that peri wound. The skin looks more vibrant, more healthy, um, not as dusky the term we'll use sometimes. And that's also very important for the wound to heal. You want the peri wound to look good as well. 12 weeks later, night and day from that first wound, you can see it starting to kind of turn the corner and, and finish up and epithelialize. Remember, endoform builds great granulation tissue, but it can also build new skin. Those keratinocytes, those epithelial cells, it provides the scaffold and the chemical signals for all those cells to attach and form over the wound bed. 15 weeks, you can see this is very different from where we started and the patient is almost completely healed. By 16 weeks, you are completely healed. Remember, this was 18 months old and in 16 short weeks, Endoform was able to get rid of that inflammation and allow that patient to regenerate and heal and get back to their lives. And most importantly, get them out of that excruciating pain that these types of ulcers can lead to. 
So you saw a really complex case, but let's take a step back. What is an extracellular matrix? Today at WoundCon, and you probably hear the term ECM or extracellular matrix a lot, but what really is that? As the name implies, extracellular, it means that it's everything besides the cells. We know that there's endothelial cells, blood vessels, there's epithelial cells or skin, there's fibroblasts, which are the builder cells that are always maintaining our tissues and helping to regenerate. But all those other things that you see there, collagen, um, collagen type one, collagen type three, collagen type four, elastin, glycaminoglycans like hyaluronic acid, which is, is very, very popular in care right now, all of those complex proteins and molecules make up our soft tissues. And they are all found in our native tissue. And when you have a wound, that is gone. That extracellular matrix is either severely damaged or just frankly not there anymore. So you need a product that you're able to build the scaffold so allow all the new cells to form, but to give the body, the native tissue, all of those wonderful structural adhesion molecules and signaling molecules to allow for the soft tissue to regenerate. So we know that the regenerative medicine, you need a purified tissue extracellular matrix to begin the process of, of wound healing and to finalize it as well. So that's exactly what Aroa brings us. It's this extracellular matrix. It's a xenograft, meaning it comes from another species. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But this is endoform, if you're not familiar with it. You can see those beautiful fenestrations there to allow for any exudate to get out. Uh, but there's also a high flow product for the really heavily exudating wounds, like for venous leg ulcers. So again, where does this stuff come from? Um, it comes from the beautiful island nation of New Zealand, where there are abundant amount of, of beautiful sheep. And they are, it's a very highly regulated and very popular industry where these uh, sheep are, are, are raised to be food products and meat throughout the entire globe. But we take care of them respectfully. Um, they're euthanized respectfully. Uh, and we are able to harvest their fore stomach, which is a very large organ full of blood vessels and very vascular. And uh, that is our source material. So if you look at this slide right here in, in A, this is a, a slide of that sheep uh, tissue. The top bright pink there is your epithelial cells. The bottom ovals are your skeletal muscles. We use a proprietary gentle way to get rid of all the sheep DNA and cells because that's where you might get a host response, but we get rid of all that foreign material and what you're left with is this intact extracellular matrix that looks just like any type of mammals, including humans, um, soft tissue matrix. Really important to know that you don't always need human tissue to heal human tissue. Ma mammalian um, extracellular matrix and soft tissue is well conserved, whether you're a dog or a sheep or a human. It pretty much looks the same underneath the microscope, which is super interesting. Why did they choose this? Like we talked about before, it is highly vascularized. It's a very large tissue. So we can make pretty big sheets for those really big, nasty wounds. And this is where the ruminants like sheep are evolving to, or have evolved, I should say, to take up all those nutrients. So the cells have to turn over quickly. There's a lot of vascularity there. And that's why it's the perfect source tissue for extracellular matrix for regenerative healing. So again, this is what the product looks like if you're not familiar with it. Endoform Natural is kind of the flagship products. But there's other ones out there, High Flow, AM for your antimicrobials as well. And it has all those wonderful glycaminoglycans, all the proteins and molecules that normally exist in soft tissue to heal and regenerate and encourage a patient's soft tissue to heal. Now, here's where things get a little bit confusing. As some of you may know, there are collagen dressings, and that's very much kind of an insurance and a billing type of thing where they lump all these products together. But like we just talked about, calling endoform just a collagen dressing is definitely short selling it. Collagen makes up about 85% of our extracellular matrix, a huge number, but that extra 15% is very, very important. And that 85% is not just one type of collagen, which you might see in reconstituted collagen matrix, like you're seeing on the right side here, but there's type one, type three, type four, and that is all that you'd find in endo form. So the paper clip you see that, what, are you, what does that paper clip have to do with anything? The reason why there's that paper clip there is the two paper clips are made of the same material. But if it's not configured in the right way, then it doesn't function as a paper clip. And that's what endoform is able to do is because that it is configured very na natively, naturally, and hasn't been changed or synthesized or, or kind of altered in any real way, 
it's going to be able to form and function like normal collagen. Unfortunately, these reconstituted matrices, they're all kind of melted down and then kind of cobbled back together. And you're never going to get that same structure um, that will build new tissue in the um, extracellular matrix of the native person. So again, all collagens are not created equal. And this is a great slide right here that kind of illustrates that. This um, on the top there, you see all the different proteins and molecules that make up our extracellular matrix um, of the human body. You can see endoform checks all the boxes. It has all of those things. It's grouped together with things like promogran and puricol and fibrocrol, which I've had some pretty good success with over the years. But why wouldn't you want to give this extra boost of biology and structure to heal your patients right there? Um, not needing to go to the operating room for these skin subs necessarily, um, but able to heal your patients right in front of you, whether you're at home in a long-term -term care facility, uh, facility or at the wound care center. You want to be able to have all these options for you. So as you can see, endoform is actually more comparable biologically to these cellular tissue products, skin subs, grafts. They all have different but we, knew, we do know that they're expensive. You have to wait four weeks to even get your hands on them. Patients need to go through all these diagnostic texts, uh, tests and check all these boxes before you can even get your hands on it. Endoform, you can use day one with all the biology of those skin subs and heal your patients on day one, not waiting four weeks for things to not happen before you think that your patient deserves to heal. Let's start healing them day one. So this is what we talked about. This is a bit of a graph on the X axis or the bottom, you talk about biology. Again, not just type one collagen, all the different types of collagens and proteins that make up our complex soft tissue. On the top, you want structure. You want it to be, have this, you want to have the cells to have the ability to actually attach and communicate with each other. That's what endoform can give you, a big chunk of biology and the structure and the template for the cells to actually adhere onto. Reconstituted collagen unfortunately doesn't have much of either. And those expensive and hard to get CTPs or cellular tissue products, skin subs, they're pretty good. They're in the middle of the road. But again, the problem is that they're extremely expensive. So again, what is we all know in wound care or should know in wound care that blood is life. You need vascularity to heal anything. You can use the best products on the planet, but if you don't have the blood flow to heal, then things are not going to move the way we want to. What's really cool about endoform is because it was gently processed from that fore stomach of the sheep, we actually retained all of the vessels and grooves and pathways that the pre-existing blood vessels formed. So the blood vessels are gone, but the grooves that they forged are still there to act as a template for when you put that into the patient's wound, now the new endothelial cells can migrate in and just form along here. The picture up here on the right, this lovely purple color, one of our excellent engineers in New Zealand just injected one of our endoform um, dressings with dye to see, hey, can we see those, those vascular channels? And indeed you can. And the bottom picture there is kind of the live um, uh, fore stomach of the sheep. And you can see they look pretty much the same. This is a micro CT here showing those vascular channels in high definition. Imagine it like squeezing a garden hose and you can see those vascular channels ready to pump that wound full of blood and life. So again, you probably are familiar with the four phases of wound healing. And what's important to know is that while endoform really makes a name for itself, and if moving things from the inflammatory phase to the proliferative phase, you can use endoform in all four phases. And you can see here why that's successful. So again, endoform can be utilized in all kinds of wounds. We saw that really tough pyoderma gangrenosum earlier pressure wounds or PIs, diabetic wounds, acute wounds, chronic wounds, tunneled undermining wounds, even surgical wounds. If you have a surgical dehiscence or a donor site from a skin graft, you can utilize endoform on any type of acute or chronic wound from that standpoint. So again, super important. Like Kathy Milne said before, why not have access, if you could, to an advanced wound dressing to heal and regenerate your patients day one. And that's exactly what endoform can do, whether it's in the patient's home, long-term care facility, inpatient, wound care center, any, it shouldn't matter what facility, it shouldn't matter what your credentials are, you're a healer, you're a nurse, and you should be able to use these products on day one to heal your patients on day one. So let's watch a really quick video here to show you just how easy it is to apply endoform.
platform is an extracellular matrix that works with the patient's own cells to build new tissue. Right there, you see those vascular channels right there when you hold up to the light. In all phases of healing for all types of wounds, including partial and full thickness wounds, pressure ulcers, venous ulcers, diabetic ulcers, chronic vascular ulcers, tunneled or undermined wounds, surgical wounds, traumatic wounds, draining wounds. Endoform is available in two versions, endoform natural and endoform antimicrobial. One or both may be used during the course of treatment, depending on the wound. The application and reapplication of both endoform products is the same. Endoform is easy to apply. First, assemble all the materials you will need. Endoform extracellular matrix. Select the size most suited to the wound and the level of exudate. Multiple sheets can be used to cover the wound bed as needed, depending on the exudate of the wound. Sterile saline. An optional secondary dressing if needed, such as a contact layer. A non-adherent absorption dressing that is appropriate to manage wound exudate. Something to secure the cover dressing with. Prepare the wound bed by cleansing, irrigating, and if necessary, debridement to ensure the wound is free of slough or devitalized tissue. Next, select a sheet of endoform that is slightly larger than the wound. Endoform can be applied as a whole sheet or trimmed so that it contacts the wound edges. You can certainly layer it as well. Endoform can be placed down on the wound bed. Apply so that it covers the entire wound bed and conforms to the contours of the wound. It's okay if endoform overlaps onto surrounding healthy skin. Rehydrate the endoform with saline or exudate until moistened. When rehydrated, endoform transforms into a soft conforming sheet. Next, apply a secondary dressing to protect the wound bed and the endoform matrix. Then secure the cover dressing. Endoform may be used in conjunction with compression therapy or negative pressure wound therapy as directed by your wound care provider. So as you can see, they're very, very easy to apply it. You basically take the product, you put it in the wound bed, um, you can hydrate it in, in or out of the wound bed right here. This particular nurse is, is choosing to put it in the wound bed, hydrating it. You can trim it to size or fold in the layers there. And then your favorite dressing of choice uh, right on top of there. This one is Hydrofera, which is a wonderful um, uh, antimicrobial dressing with methylene uh, blue and gentian violet. Really, really great. Um, dressing there. So you can see it's easy. Why do you have to have special credentials or be in a special facility to apply this powerful dressing that's so easy to apply? So like we talked about before, getting out of that inflammatory phase and going to the proliferative phase is usually where people run into problems when it comes to healing. Uh, a big uh, one thing to remember is that inflammation is not just yes or no, it's a spectrum. Um, and proteases, uh, we talked a little bit before and, and one of the wound care talks about proteases being a marker of inflammation. So if you have low proteases, you don't have a lot of inflammation. If you have high proteases, then there's a lot of inflammation. And endoform, how quickly it, it integrates will actually diagnostically tell you how inflamed the wound is. We get this question a lot. Um, how do you know it's residual um, endoform or is it slough? And the answer is actually pretty easy. I'm very aggressive with my debridements. I love to be sharp and get rid of anything that looks non-viable. But a very easy way before you're too aggressive is take a little gauze or a Q-tip and gently kind of debride mechanically across the suspected tissue. If it comes off pretty easily, then it's likely slough. If it kind of attaches uh, and stays on there, then more than likely, it's probably endoform that's still working. Leave it be. You can certainly put some more to the adjacent area, but leave that good endoform there. If the endoform is, into, uh, up to, is taken up very, very quickly, then, then that probably means it's very inflamed. You might want to add more. You can see in the middle here, as the wound starts to leave the inflammatory phase, it's looking granular and beefy, but there are still some residual endoform there. 
Um, and then towards the end here, you can see that the wound looks great, it's healing, and that inflammatory phase is leaving. So you don't need to use as much endoform, which is wonderful. So this is almost what you want to look at. I know me, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to take my curette, I want to get rid of all that. But in fact, no, you want to leave that be. Let's finish up with one last case, something I'm sure a lot of you see, these really tough painful to heal venous leg ulcers. Now, obviously a lot of people uh, know, and if you don't know, compression is king when it comes to venous leg ulcers. You can throw the kitchen sink at these, uh, these patients, and unfortunately they may not heal as quickly as you want if you're not addressing the compression. So address the compression, most important thing, but now you want it to heal once you've addressed that compression. This patient had this wound very painful for nine months. We applied endoform, and you can see after just three short weeks, the wound is already epithelializing. It's already starting to heal and become granular. Five weeks, look again at how red and angry and inflamed the wound is. And then after two treatments, uh, uh, excuse me, after five weeks of endoform, now the peri wound skin looks healthier. It's healed after five weeks. Again, this poor patient had this painful VLU that can land them in the hospital, can land them in the operating room, leave them with an excruciating pain for nine months and healed in five weeks by the power of nurses and home care and LTACs and in the wound care center. So don't ever forget the power that, that nurses have to heal wounds, not just change dressings, but to heal and regenerate. So here, if you're interested in learning more about Endoform, visit, visit us on the web at aroabio.com. We have a, a very wonderful customer service team, live folks that will reach out to you uh, if you call or email us. And of course, visit us on LinkedIn and myself, Dr. Brandon Bosquet on LinkedIn. I love talking wounds. Uh, and I really appreciate you all for coming out today. Um, and thank you so much to uh, Kathy Milne and Dr. Jai Shah for putting on such a wonderful event. Uh, and everyone in this room and everyone at WoundCon, we all have the same goal. We want to unlock regenerative healing for everybody, not just people that have resources, not just people that can get to a, a hospital, but everybody. So thank you very, very much. And I'd be happy to open it up to some questions. Here we go. We have a question popping up in the chat here. Great. So we have a question from Tim. Um, he's asking, uh, he says he uses a lot of collagen dressings. And in my clinical practice, I did too. But what's the key difference between collagen dressings and endoform? And we chatted a little bit about that. But Tim, great question. The real key difference is a lot of the collagen dressings are simply just one little type of collagen, type one collagen. And again, it was kind of melted down and reconstituted. I make a silly analogy. I'm a chocoholic. I love chocolate. And sometimes if you leave it in a pocket or in your car, that chocolate kind of melts down, no matter what you do, that chocolate will never get back to that same beautiful bar. And if you bite it, it probably won't really taste the same. It's still chocolate. If you looked under a microscope, it'll still be chocolate, but it's not the same thing. Endoform has type one collagen, type three collagen, type four collagen, glycominoglycans, fibronectin, uh, elastin, all of these wonderful um, aspects that unfortunately the collagen dressings traditionally don't have. And it has the structure for cells to come and attach, adhere and communicate with each other for good, healthy tissue and regeneration. So Tim, that's a really great question. Thank you so much for that. All right, we have another one popping up here in the chat. Kim, really, really good question. And you're right. Again, in my clinical practice, I've used a ton of collagens and skin subs, and a lot of them are very specific. Up, down, basement side, hydrophilic side, hydrophobic side. But again, at Aroa, they want to make things as easy and streamlined as possible. There's really no right up or down. It's all the same. So the rough side, smooth side, doesn't matter. Just lay it right in there, um, which is wonderful. It makes it that much easier. But Kim, excellent, excellent question. Hey, Amir. So a wonderful question from Amir. How long can we keep the dressings without changing it if the wound is not draining? And that's a great question because, again, if you have a heavily draining wound, you want to kind of change those dressings a little bit more, even if you leave the endoform intact. But generally, we like eyes on the endoform in about 72 hours. Um, again, whether it's the physician, whether it's a nurse, um, whether it's a, um, a, a family member that's been trained and, and spoken to about what to look out for, we like eyes on it in about 72 hours. But sometimes, depending on how many proteases are there and how much residual endoform still exists, 
you don't maybe not need to change or add more endoform until about a week. If it's already eaten up after that two or three days, then please add more endoform to continue to combat that inflammation. But to answer your question, Amir, we usually like about 72 hours before somebody takes a peek at it. If it's already integrated, then certainly put more on there. But generally, you can apply endoform weekly to get that biological punch and power. Another really great question. Thank you, Amir. So we'll wait for a couple more questions, but again, we encourage you to speak with our, our product educators in our booth, um, myself and my colleague, Shane Dowling, which if you had the chance to see the presentation earlier, will be around. But again, feel free to, to chat with us there or on LinkedIn um, and definitely visit us at aroabio.com. We have a wound con promotion and special today so that you can have that, that ability to regenerate wounds uh, in your hands with some samples. So you can see firsthand how Endoform uh, works to unlock regenerative healing. So we'd love to get some endoform samples into your hands so you can feel it and see it for yourself and you can see the clinical outcomes for yourself. So a, another great question, right? So we talked about, you know, yeah, it helps with inflammation, but how? So basically what it does is the endoform has these special molecules in there called TIMPs. They help to reduce those proteases. And in fact, when you put the um, endoform dressing on there, the proteases that are overworking and eating up too much of the wound and not letting the builder cells get in there and regenerate more, now they have a substrate that the endoform dressing to go and eat up some of that. So it literally will pull all of those proteases away from the patient's wound bed and to sacrifice the endoform product. Um, that's why if there's a lot of proteases, the product will go pretty quick because those proteases are eating it up. If there's not, then the product may linger. So remember, inflammation isn't always bad, right? Inflammation has a job to do, but if those cleanup um, proteins stick around too long, then the builder proteins and cells can't do their job. So it's really important that the inflammation crew does their job and leaves and the building crew gets in there to build that granulation tissue and ultimately the skin. So another really great question from the crowd here. Um, we're out of questions and nearing the end of time. So please visit our booth, uh, say hi to our wonderful product educators and learn a little bit more about getting endoform in your area. But again, thank you very much. My name is Dr. Brandon Bosque, medical science liaison in the medical affairs team with a row biosurgery. And I'm here with you all to unlock regenerative healing for everybody. Thank you so much.